Can you use Internet content to supplement your teaching materials? And why? The Copyright Act includes an exemption for educational institutions that permits the reproduction, performance, and communication of copyright-protected content like text, images, videos, and music that is publicly available on the Internet. This exception for educational institutions is new as of November 2012. It may surprise you to know that before this exception was included in the Copyright Act, you couldn't legally reproduce portions of publicly available Internet content without seeking permission from the copyright owner. That's because much of the content you'll find on the Internet is protected by copyright. But as an educator, you now have the right to use some of it. In fact, a lot of it. How do you know which websites you can copy from? You can use content from online sources that are publicly available. Generally speaking, publicly available online sources are websites that copyright owners make available for the public to use freely and access without restrictions. Internet content is not considered publicly available when its access is restricted by logins, passwords, or other kinds of technological protection measures like digital locks. If you're not familiar with technological protection measures like digital locks, check out the module, Can I Break a Digital Lock for Educational Purposes? What else? Any content that is accompanied by a clearly visible notice that prohibits educational use cannot be reproduced, performed, or communicated for educational purposes. But there is still a vast amount of content on the Internet that's publicly available which means that you, as an educator, can reproduce text or images from these websites to use in your presentation slides, on handouts, or on your college's learning management system like Blackboard or Desire to Learn. You can also perform publicly available music in the classroom, perform publicly available videos, either by embedding links in your presentation slides or by performing them directly from their online sources. What about uploading digital files from the Internet to your college's learning management system? You can do this, but you can also provide your students with links to this content. By linking to online content, you can avoid reproducing it, and links make it easier to associate digital files with their original sources. This is important because citing your source is an obligation that the Copyright Act requires if you make use of the exception that permits the use of publicly available content on the Internet. So remember to cite your source and never make use of content that you suspect was not posted by or with the permission of the copyright owner. If you need help distinguishing infringing content from legal content on the Internet, check out the modules How Do I Know If Internet Content Is Infringing Copyright? This has been a general discussion about using publicly available Internet content in the classroom. For more information, always refer to your college's copyright practices or ask the person designated by your college to answer copyright questions. Your college library is a good place to start.